Hello everybody, I'm Nicola O'Brien and I'm a lead educator at Grow Up Academy. This video today is part of a series which explores teaching cybersecurity in the primary school years. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at information privacy and security. Before we get underway, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land where I am recording today, the Camaragal people. I'd like to recognize the First Nations people of Australia as this country's original teachers and holders of knowledge. This video refers to a range of classroom activities, both online and unplugged. I'll be providing links at the end of the video so that you can access all the activities that I'll be talking about, and they're available free of charge for Australian school students in years three and above. And before I get started, I'd also like to thank Google. They have provided funding to allow us to make this series of videos under the CS Educator PD Grants Program in 2021. And in a year where uh, delivering PD was unpredictable and we changed plans a number of times, we're really grateful for the flexibility Google provided to allow us to provide a number of modes of delivery of professional development this year. So in today's video, I'll be speaking about introducing the idea of information, privacy, and security to primary school students. And when we think about cybersecurity, privacy and um, privacy of information really is at the heart of what we want students to understand. Uh, we often talk about digital footprint, and that's what we're talking about today. I'll pause there for a second. Um, when we talk about digital footprint, we mean what is the trail that we leave about us in our digital lives? And what can people find out about us? Um, it's a tricky one to teach with primary school students as we get older, the sort of consequence of the information that is available about us online probably resonates more. Um, sometimes teachers talk about what would we think about grandparents could see this information or, you know, how would we feel in a couple of years if we look back and everyone can see all the photos of us in our social lives. Um, so those are some of the ideas we'll be talking about. Before I talk about that topic in particular, I'm going to introduce the Grok Academy cybersecurity resources. We'll take a brief look at them and then we'll delve into today's topic in a bit more detail. So we believe in teaching cybersecurity. It's innately a really interesting topic. Um, it has a lot of relevance to students and there are often stories in the news about big hacks and cybersecurity breaches. Um, we think it's a very topical thing. Also, part of learning about cybersecurity is taking on the role of being an investigator and sort of investigating, figuring out how did this data get leaked? How was someone's password revealed? And it's uh, for students that like puzzles and scavenger hunts and a bit of detective work, it can be a really super engaging topic to teach. Um, it's very easy to see the practical application of having better cybersecurity. You have less chance of being hacked. Um, we're constantly being peppered with scams and spam messages, and we need to understand how to avoid that and how to avoid becoming the victim of a scam. Um, and compared with a lot of the other activities students do in the classroom, we think cybersecurity is perfect candidate for what we in the office call hard fun. So there's some challenging ideas, there are some tricky problems to solve, um, but students generally are well rewarded by putting in the effort, and we hope that our activities ignite that interest in your students. In terms of where cybersecurity sits in the curriculum, um, as at the date of this recording, version eight of the Australian curriculum is the current one, and this is 2021. Um, and obviously there is a new version of the curriculum coming out next year that we'll look at next. But in terms of the current state of play of the Australian curriculum, um, where you'll find it in the curriculum for primary school students is a couple of places. Firstly, in digital technologies, the subject, um, you will see references to how data is secured, um, managing access to data and data privacy. Um, when you get into special cybersecurity topics like encryption, there are also some links to concepts like data representation and sending or transmission of data through networks. So it pops up in a few places, but generally speaking, we're talking about security of data, managing access to it and privacy. Uh, throughout the ICT general capability, which is the responsibility of all teachers across the curriculum, uh, there are references to applying social and ethical protocols and practices. And if you're a New South Wales teacher, 
um, you'll see that in the science and technology primary school curriculum, there are references to the transmission of data and technical protocols and the safe use of technology. Um, when you use our resources, you'll find that we provide lesson plans for our activities. And when you look into those, there'll be more detail about specific curriculum coverage for the particular activity that you are looking at. And I'll show you in an upcoming slide another way that you can delve into the curriculum and find out the particular um, content descriptors and key concepts that are useful when you're wanting to map your activities back to the curriculum. In terms of where we're heading with version 9, and as at the date of recording, the final version of version 9 is not yet published. Um, but from the drafts that we've had an opportunity to look at and be involved in consultation on, we believe that there will be more emphasis on cybersecurity, um, information privacy and ownership of data in the next version of the curriculum, all the way from kindergarten or F right through the year groups. Um, and we'll see that both in the digital technologies subject uh, with information from the early years on personal data and who owns it through to ideas in year one and two about using school accounts and thinking about where information is stored, getting into passwords in year three and passphrases and digital footprint ideas in years five and six. Um, we also think that we will expect to see more information in the ICT general capability. So I mentioned uh, that we have a resource you can look at. Uh, we have a web page called Unpacking the Curriculum. You can access it from our website. I'll provide links at the end. And what this allows you to do, it's an interactive tool that lets you explore all of the key concepts in the curriculum. Um, so digital systems is one that I mentioned. Uh, you can click into it across year groups. So look at what digital systems is covered in the curriculum for, year, for years F to two. Um, and you'll see the content descriptors in there. You'll be able to expand on them to get extended definitions um, and see some examples of what might be included. And then you can look across the year group. So you can say, how does digital systems as a concept progress from F to year 12? Uh, the version currently represents version eight of the Australian curriculum, and it will be updated in 2022 to reflect version nine of the curriculum. So please keep checking back and using that resource. It's there for you. So generally, what kind of activities do we have? Um, this series of videos that we're recording cover four concepts, digital footprint, password security, scam avoidance, and cryptography. And you'll find all of the series of videos available on our website. Um, and for each of those, particularly for primary school students, we understand different teachers have different needs and different amounts of time available. And so we have provided a range of online and offline activities, and you can pick a mix and find what works for you. Um, they're all held together with a series of lesson plans. So you, uh, we also, also suggest some external activities, you know, for example, watching a video, having a class discussion with some prompt questions. So um, the activities are there for you to combine in a way that makes sense for your class, your students and your resources. Just do what works best for you, um, but know that all of them have accompanying notes for teachers to explain the context and the background. Uh, and also come with curriculum linking so you can see what you're covering through doing these activities. Okay, digital footprint, let's watch and what does your data say about you? We think this is such a relevant idea for students, um, particularly around year three, four, it's a great time, probably before they get a phone, where you can reinforce some of the ideas about why they might want to keep information private, um, how they can inadvertently share information and encourage some good behavior around sharing either their own information or information about friends and family. Those are the key ideas that we start to introduce. So we have some unplugged activities to support this topic. Uh, one of the most popular ones, and in a live webinar, we would go through this as an interactive activity. It's great fun in the classroom. On the website, you'll find we either have a printable, so you can print these cards off and cut them out and laminate them. I believe there'll be options available for you to order them from us soon. Um, or we have an interactive PowerPoint that you can put up on a board in the classroom where everyone can see and you can have a discussion. Um, what we have, what this is, it's a pack of cards. Uh, we have 
um, a piece of information or data about a person on the front and on the back, we have either that it's okay to share or don't share with an explanation. So the idea is you would put all the cards up on the table face up and then sort them into piles. Which of this information should we share? Which should we not share? So you can see we use examples like sharing your name. Um, I've shared my name today and who I am. It's very common that we share who we are online. It's a key piece of identifying information. We think our name on its own generally um, can't be used against us. Obviously, yeah, there are situations where people don't want to use their full name, but generally introducing yourself by name online is okay. And as adults, we do it often, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, and online forums, we often use our names. And that's something that generally we think is okay to share. And um, when we run this activity live, there are differing opinions. So it's okay to hold a contrary view. That's part of why we have a discussion around these cards. Um, another piece of information, your town or city. Um, again, context is everything. If you're teaching in a small re a remote school with 10 students and a town's population of 500, sharing your name plus your town would be very precise information that would really pin back to you. Um, I'm in Sydney, I'm happy to share that. I shared at the beginning, I'm coming to you from Camaragal land, which is another geographic locator for me. Um, I'm comfortable sharing that because on its own, it doesn't really let anyone know too much about me. Uh, I wouldn't share my street address, obviously, um, but I'm happy to share generally my town or city. Banking pin, here's a really simple one. Um, relevant to adults, you, perhaps you'll need to explain to kids in these days of sort of tapping for everything what a pin number is. I don't use mine as much as I used to, but I certainly wouldn't be sharing it with anybody. And that's a good, um, clear example in the don't share pile of cards. So I won't continue going through all of them. I'll scroll past a few because it's not a live session, so it's not as much fun. We'd much rather be with you in person. Um, email address. This is a really interesting one, and we've had great debates with teachers about whether we should share our email address or not. And it's a good topic to engender some lively debate and guess what, uh, if you haven't picked up on this, on the back of the card, some of them say share with caution. And this is a good example of share with caution. So we encourage you. It's worth noting um, on the actual cards, there's a sentence or paragraph description giving a little bit more information or color for a class discussion. Sorry, I'm fidgeting. I just got cramp in my foot. Um, so the outcome of this activity is to get students thinking about what they sh should or shouldn't share and why. It's all about having the discussion um, and justifying the choices that students make. In terms of unplugged activities, if you would like to follow that up with something else, uh, we provide a worksheet. I'll show that, yeah. Um, so it's a printable worksheet that you can have a look at before you jump into the online activities, maybe a nice linkage. Um, it's called Profile Checkup. And we have a fictitious student, Belinda, who has shared all sorts of things on her profile. And, you know, you can give the students a pen, you can put them in groups. Um, and with what they've learned from the card activity, they can then go through this profile and give Belinda some tips about the things that seem okay to share and the things that she should consider keeping more private. Um, there are some really obvious things in here, for example, a street address, um, and there are some more subtle things. Have a good discussion, chat through. And so those are some of the unplugged activities that we have to support teaching information privacy. If we move into the online activities, what I'd like to show you is our fake phone interface. Um, it would be familiar to some people who have used our activities before. For others, this might be new. Um, this is the Grok platform where you sign up your students and they each have their own accounts and can come and interact with our content. And the fake phone is a world that we've built for students to interact and understand social media and think about the kind of information that they share. Uh, we start with primary students with a very simple version of the phone, just with one app visible. 
and this is called Fistbump, um, which has some similarities to another social media app, starting with the letter F, who recently changed its name. So you can scroll through and meet these uh, students and teenagers who have worked with us to create a whole social media world. Um, it's all clickable, so you can click through and explore who people are friends with, what they've talked about. And we start with some really simple questions. Um, here's Isaac. He's shared his email on his profile page. Uh, it's a public profile, I believe. Is that a good idea? I guess it links back to the card activity and what we think about sharing emails on profiles. Um, and the students can come in and from the drop down check which email has been shared. Um, by the look of it, that's his school email account. That's another thing you might want to speak to students about is using school email accounts for personal use. And we can come in here and mark out an answer. And we'll get feedback instantly to let us know, yep, that was the correct choice from the drop down. Um, so through this social media world, we introduce students to all sorts of ways information can be shared. Um, and things to sort of have a second think about. So let's look at some more. So June has her birthday listed on her fist bump profile. And we can scroll through and see what we can find here. Uh, if your students need to get through the content more quickly, they can use control F to scroll. That's just a little tip. So here, at least June doesn't have her email on her public profile. So that's better than Isaac was doing. She's a little bit more security conscious. If we add her as a friend, ah, here we go. Sorry, date of birth, I should have said. Here's her date of birth. Um, now, interesting to note, she has 600 friends. And so... Um, we like to engender discussion as you go through these activities and you may want to do them as a group and stop after each question and discuss or the students can go at their own pace but an interesting discussion point here is you know if you have 600 friends is that really a private profile or is it essentially public if you're sharing your information with that many people so then we ask the students to search through and find out if we can find June's mobile number. And if we take a look, now I will find it soon. Um, this is when the search function becomes useful. So I'll look through. And I can see June's got a post that says new find selfie. Someone's asked her if she's still on the same number and she said, yeah, same number and actually put her number in the comment. Now, bearing in mind how, for any, how many friends June has, mobile number is not something you necessarily want to share with people. Um, and so here's an example where sharing through the comments has revealed some private information. And by the look of it, maybe she didn't consider that too much before she shared it. So you can see the interactive platforms lets us bring out some ideas around sharing information and give students some pointers in terms of what's good sharing practice and what might not be so good. Uh, I'll leave you to explore the rest of them, but we put some interesting problems in front of the students there. Here are some shots. I'll see which other ones we've highlighted. Another interesting one is we have a photo where someone's shared a picture of a lost key. But if you look closely, you'll see the person's telephone number on the key tag. So that's an example of sharing information in a picture, which happens quite commonly. So the learning outcomes from the online platform, students will see real examples reflecting how sharing can occur. We encourage the students to think before they post um, and thinking about how they can reveal information about themselves. Uh, we're working on a series of updates at the moment to the platform so if you've used them before stay tuned um, we're adding some fresh video content um, and giving things a bit of a tweak in 2022 so stay tuned that covers the activities that we have for information privacy and sharing um, in terms of other resources that we have available i mentioned previously that we have um, 
a range of cybersecurity activities you can choose from. They're all freely available on the platform via our website. And for primary school students, we'd specifically call out the Information Privacy and Security Challenge for primary students. Um, this is provides some really simple and actionable learning for students. And I'd also recommend Grok CyberComp, which runs twice a year. And that's a 45 minute competition where students answer 12 questions and get to explore a whole lot of relevant cybersecurity concepts. Um, and as teachers, you'll get your full set of student results and you can see whether there are any particular topics that you want to emphasize more or revisit. Uh, we have a whole range of posters available on our website. So if your room looks like it needs a bit of brightening up, um, there's a poster for this activity, which is called Are You Share Aware? And it brings up some of these topics from the card activity and students can keep it front of mind in the classroom so that they're thinking about what they should be sharing. As I mentioned before, we have lesson plans, curriculum information and teacher notes, which accompany all of our activities. Um, and if you watch the other video series, you'll see some of our other unplugged activities highlighted that you can download from our website. Here's a snapshot of the resources available on the website and where you can find them. Um, there will be some updates to our website in 2022, so I'd encourage you just to check back and get in touch with us if you're having any difficulty finding things at all. Our team's happy to help. So that brings us to the end of this um, video. There's uh, three more in the series on cybersecurity in the primary school years. Um, please let us know how you get on. We'd love to know how you're teaching this in your classroom. Uh, you can drop us an email, help at brockacademy.org. We're also on socials, so you can find us on LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter using at Brock Academy. And that's all from me. Thank you very much. <laughs>